Traditionally, we've, seen, we've thought of our business as always having worked in the form of pipes. This is the industrial legacy of business that we have, where value is created at one end, value moves down a pipe, and is pushed out at the other end. And if you think of all our traditional businesses, if you think of manufacturing supply chains, they work like a pipe. If you think of traditional media, like television, radio, all of them work like a pipe. If you think of the traditional services consulting model, it works like a pipe. Somebody owns the value creation, pushes it into the pipe, and it comes out at the other side. And if you think of what happened in the shift from physical to digital in the first version of the internet, something that we now associate with what happened in the 90s with the internet, most of the disruption that happened in the first version of the internet was actually the replacement of an inefficient pipe by a more efficient pipe. So if you think of the first industry that was disrupted, it was newspapers, because it was a very inefficient pipe. To transfer information, you needed paper. And what the internet showed us was that you really did not need paper to transfer information, so information could be free. The second industry that got disrupted was retail, because again, retail was a pipe industry, and it had really high costs of distribution. You had to set up stores everywhere. And so we saw Amazon beating Borders, we saw Netflix beating Blockbuster, we saw a lot of this happening in the shift from physical to digital. But what's happening today is that the shift is no longer just physical to digital, it's gone beyond that to leveraging intelligence, to leveraging connectivity into a new business model, which is what we understand as platforms. And when we think of platforms, the fundamental design of business itself is completely different. We talked about the pipe where the design of business was a straight line. Things moved in a straight line. A platform looks something like this, where the business creates an infrastructure on which an external ecosystem comes in, producers and consumers come in and start interacting with each other. If you think of, when you think of the word platform, one of the first things that comes to mind is what we have in our pockets right now, a smartphone. It's built on the Apple or the Android platform. If you think of the design of this business, if you think of the design of Apple App Store, Apple just creates the platform on which developers come in as producers, create applications, and then consumers people like us who use the phone come in from the other side, and we use these applications to customize our phone. Contrast this with how Nokia and BlackBerry used to work. Nokia and BlackBerry used to work in a pipe model. A whole industry was shifted from a pipe model to a platform model when Apple came in. If you think of how Nokia and BlackBerry used to work, they would create specific handsets, source applications, preload those on those handsets, and then push them out into the market. They would work in that pipe model. What Apple did was it allowed you to customize your phone in any direction. Even though all of us have iPhones, no two iPhones are the same. The capabilities are completely different because of the fact that we've downloaded very different kinds of applications. And that happened because Apple created an ecosystem of app developers and then obviated the need for any of us to own a portfolio of phones or for any company to put out a portfolio of phones. So in this case, what we see is that the business no longer creates or puts up the final value and pushes it out into the market. It creates an infrastructure on which others come and create value on top of it. Other examples of this, if you think of hotels, hotels have always worked in this pipe model where they've created rooms they've leased those rooms out, and then somebody comes in and books those rooms. And so every time a hotel needs to expand, it needs to put up more rooms. Whereas if you think of Airbnb, it solves the same problem using a platform model by inviting producers, hosts on one side, and consumers, guests on the other side, and allowing them to interact with each other. Television works on a pipe model, but YouTube works on a platform model. Traditional publishing industry works on a pipe model, but Amazon Kindle publishing works on a platform model. In all of these things, what we see is that the platform itself does not create value. It just creates the infrastructure, a plug and play infrastructure that allows external producers and consumers to come in, attach themselves, and then allows them to interact with each other. And the role of the platform focuses on is specifically two things, creating the plug and play infrastructure and deciding the rules that will determine what is a good interaction and what is not.
And that is where data comes in, because data decides who should interact with whom. Data decides which driver should come to you when you open up the Uber app. Data decides whether the driver is good enough or not. Data decides whether when you search for an apartment on Airbnb, the apartments that you're seeing are trustworthy or not. Every decision that happens on a market that is enabled by a platform is driven by data. And so when we talk about data for life, when we talk about enhancing humanity through data, the real impact of data is not in helping us take business decisions. It is not merely in helping us train our computers better to play games and beat humans. The real impact of data is in the creation of these ecosystems, these markets, and in enabling the right interactions on these markets and ecosystems. That's what we're seeing today. We're seeing it in a few industries. Increasingly, I believe that we're going to see it across all industries because what happens is the moment an industry gets digitized, it has an opportunity to be, to be re-intermediated through a platform. Think of the transportation industry. 10 to 12 years back, the internet existed, but smartphones were not there. And so a car could not be digitized. Today, Uber exists because a car can be digitized. And that's what's happening increasingly. If you look at the Internet of Things, a, an increasing number of things are going to be digitized as we move, uh, as we move forward. So as, people, as people's actions, as things, and as the data from things, as all of these things get digitized and move in a flow, there is an, an opportunity for the platform to come in and change the way that particular industry works.